Hey, what's going on everyone? It's your host, the one and only, and today I got a special video for you all. I think it's time that we discuss the Apple Savings Account. So in a way, the Apple Savings Account is more or less an extension of the Apple Card, the Apple Credit Card that is. So you do need to have an active, open Apple Credit Card if you're planning on opening up a savings account. But the benefits here are tremendous. A lot of people already know how convenient it is to have an Apple card with you. You can forget about everything, leave your wallet at home and just vibe out all day knowing that Apple Pay has your back. Now, of course, there are a few places that inevitably won't accept Apple Pay, the most notorious one being Walmart here in the United States. I really don't know why they don't have that already. I do know it's because they want to push their Walmart Pay, but that's besides the point. So guys, today I'm going to go over a step-by-step -step on how you can open your own Apple savings account. And and start investing for your future because these interest rates are actually not all that bad last i checked it was above 4.5 and here at least in the united states i want to say the national average is about a tenth of a percent a tenth and even then some banks will offer you a measly hundredth that's 0.01 of a percent basically a slap in the face and they're they're essentially laughing at you but anyways guys without further ado let's go ahead and roll that intro and get started on how to apply <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. And so first off, you need to know a few bullet points on what is required in order to open your very own Apple savings account. So first, sadly, as of the time of recording, the Apple savings account is only available to U.S. residents. That's right. One of the requirements is that you must be above 18 years old, be an owner or co-owner on an Apple credit card currently and also have a valid address here in the United States. I have no clue when and if this will be rolled out for some international folks, but I really hope it does because this interest rate, not only is it a very safe way to invest, if you will, but it pays a pretty nice interest rate. Another requirement, of course, you must have your social security or tax ID number ready. You must have set up two-factor authentication on your device, which of course is good. You're never going to want someone to just take your phone and transfer money over to their account. So it's a good bit of security right there. And then finally, all you have to do is update your iPhone to iOS 16.4 or later. As soon as you have all of those, you can begin. All right, so first I'm gonna go over how to set it up and then afterwards I'm gonna go over all of the benefits because trust me, there are a lot. So first you're gonna wanna open up your wallet app and you're gonna want to click on your Apple card. Then at the top right corner, don't forget to upgrade to iOS 16.4, otherwise these options won't be here. But over here at the top right corner, as you'll see, we have our three little dots and what you're gonna wanna hit is daily cash. Now here's a pretty interesting stat for me. My lifetime daily cash received has been $1,245. So that's a ton of money that is nice to have. Had I just used my debit card, those $1,245 would have been non-existent. So in many ways, the Apple card with that generous cash back, especially when buying stuff directly through the Apple online store or at one of their physical locations, you know, there is a nice 3% and every now and then they'll increase that to like 6%. I think I've only seen that been done uh, around the holiday season, but it's still nice to have. Okay, so towards the bottom there though, as you'll see, it says daily cash election. So whenever I use my Apple card, I normally get 3%, 2% or 1% cash back depending on what it is that I purchased or if I actually use the physical credit card. So normally all of that cash back gets transferred over to my Apple cash and I can elect to use it for purchases or transfer it over to my bank account. It's basically like cold hard cash. But once you upgrade to iOS 16.4, you should see a savings option and it'll say set up. So of course I haven't set mine up yet. So let's click on that. And as you can see currently, the APY or annual percentage yield is 4.15%. Once again, that's pretty nice in today's rate environment. Considering most other of the big banks, like down here in the South in Georgia, you know, we got all of the big ones. We have Wells Fargo, Bank of America, um, Truist. So there's a lot. And most of those will offer you a measly 10th or even worse, a one hundredth of a percent, which is absolutely nothing. So anyway, we hit continue. 
All right, so right here, it's gonna ask me for my full social security number. Now, of course, I'm gonna keep that off camera, but just type that in. Then you'll hit next up there at the top. So now the next step is gonna have you agree to some savings account terms and conditions. If you guys are following me along, please make sure to open up all of these agreements. I know probably no one is gonna read all of that, but just make sure you understand what you're signing up for. So I read all of these already and understand what I'm signing up for. So I'm going to hit agree. It says we're almost there. To open your account, the IRS requires you to confirm the following. Have I been notified that I'm subject to backup withholding by the IRS? Now, if you have no clue, chances are you need to hit no. As a matter of fact, even right here, it says yes, and that's an uncommon situation. So I'm not subject to backup withholding, so I'm gonna hit no, and then at the bottom, I'm gonna hit confirm and open account. So now it says it's submitting my application to Goldman Sachs. Now, of course, since I already have an Apple credit card, I don't think that this is gonna run a credit check. So that is very important to know. This is a savings account and not a credit account like the Apple card is. There it is. So we got the check mark. It said account created. Now check this out, guys. It already says that I only have a dollar and 20 cents in Apple cash right now. So instead of transferring that over to my regular checking account, I'm going to transfer it over to my brand new Apple savings account, and it's going to earn 4.15% interest on my money. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer. It's asking for face ID. So let me go ahead and do that. And there's the ding. And now I have a dollar, a whopping dollar and 20 cents in my savings account. Now, of course, what you can do is you can withdraw or add money. Now, here's the really cool thing about this Apple savings account. Although it is a savings account, and I would recommend anyone watching to refrain as much as you can from using your savings account as a checking account, you can do it. So let's say you have $100 in your Apple savings account and you owe your buddy $25. You could, in theory, withdraw $25 from your Apple savings account, transfer it over to Apple Cash, and then send it to your friend that way. But my recommendation is to always stay true to your investment goals and think about the long run. So basically the whole gimmick about the Apple savings account, and it's a really terrific thing to offer, is that all of your Apple cash, all of that 3%, 2%, and 1% cash back can be deposited into your Apple savings account and start earning that very safe 4.15%. Now these interest rates are variable, so they could go up, they could go down. Right now, since the Federal Reserve is increasing their interest rates, savings accounts for the foreseeable future should in theory continue to grow. I don't anticipate savings rates to go any higher than 5.5%, but considering most banks are paying nothing versus 4.15%, this is a very stellar option. So as you can see, if I were to click the add money option, uh, so long as I have a linked checking account, which I do, that way I can pay off my Apple credit card every month. Let's say you wanted to transfer $60, then you would hit next. And then as you can see, it's asking if I want to go ahead and transfer that money over from my linked checking account. For the time being, I'm not gonna do this, but what I anticipate on doing is transferring something realistic that way I can give you guys three months, six months, nine month updates on how my money has grown. Once again, 4.15% is nothing out of the ordinary, but it beats the 0.1 at best that your traditional bank is currently offering. And there's a lot of reasons why Apple can offer a much higher interest rate versus your traditional bank. There's many reasons for this. If you think about your traditional bank where you go in person and withdraw your money, that bank needs to probably pay rent or any kind of real estate property taxes. They have a lot of overhead, you know, having to buy printing materials, uh, paper clips, I don't know who else, whatever, whatever a bank has to buy to operate, such as pens, you know, stuff like that. They also have a lot more employees to pay. So the reason that Apple can offer a much higher yield is because a lot of that overhead they simply don't have. They don't have these physical locations that they may have to have a high electricity bill, pay any rent, nothing like that. Of course, they have employees dedicated to solving customer complaints, but it's not to the same magnitude or same level level 
as your traditional bank that has several branches, sometimes more than three within the same city. So yeah, basically when you agree to those terms and conditions, all of your future daily cash will be deposited into this savings account. And that's awesome because then your money is allowed to compound much quicker over time. And if you wanted to, in theory, you could set up your own scheduled transfer. So like, let's say for example, you get paid every two weeks and let's say you wanted to invest for maybe a child's future educational expenses, maybe a brand new car, or maybe you just want an emergency fund. Well, every two weeks or so, you can transfer 50, 60, 100, $200, whatever it is that's within your reach and have that be deposited constantly and consistently every two weeks so that you can watch your money grow. Now, if you guys could see, I'm a sucker for analytics and anything data related, so I love that it shows a graph. So of course, I just opened mine up today, but over the long run, I cannot wait to see how my money will grow. At 4.15%, that assumes that with a $10,000 balance, you should be making roughly around $415 of interest every year. So your interest is being accrued daily, and I believe it gets paid monthly. So that way you get paid interest, now you have even more money in your savings account, and then next month, so long as you leave it there and, and have it continuously grow, next month you'll get an even bigger interest payment. And then the, the month after that, an even bigger one. Now, of course, there's a lot of variables. For example, if in the United States, if rates start to drop once again, then savings rates will also drop as well. They just kind of go hand in hand with each other. But for now, this is an excellent option for anyone wanting to up their game in terms of financial literacy. Many people that I know love their Apple card. It's so convenient. And now why wouldn't you want to streamline a savings account that kind of just happens automatically? You swipe your card or use Face ID to make purchases and rest assured that that reward that you're supposed to get, be it 3%, 2% or 1%, whatever that amount is, it'll get transferred over to your savings account for you and your future. So I used to be a banker for one of my local banks here, so I know a lot of this. So if you guys wanna see an updated video, please let me know in the comments below. Once again, I'm planning on transferring $60 every two weeks. So again, just something within reason. I feel $60, well, $120 monthly is very within reach for most people, at least I would hope. So join me along that journey and in six months or three or whatever i'm gonna have an updated video to see how much in fact i was able to save if you guys are having any trouble on opening up your very own savings account make sure to dm me over on my socials go ahead and follow me and ask me any question related to the apple credit card or the apple savings account but for now, I think this is a fantastic option. I really love that Apple came out with this. And now effectively, Apple's trying to take over your traditional bank, because think about it, you can use your Apple credit card for anything. You have your daily cash there for purchases or for sending money to friends and family. And now you also have that savings account. So guys, let me know what you guys think. This is a newer addition to Apple's suite of services. And in the long run, I know that this is going to be something very enjoyable, very worthwhile. And not only that, but with that 4.15% as of the recording of this video, I mean, it's well above the national average and you really can't beat it anywhere else. So guys, thanks for watching. Drop your thoughts down below. And with that, I'm clocking out for now. Don't forget to drink some water and I'll be catching you all real soon in my next video.